Welcome to the Masters in Motion podcast. In today's episode, we have a Masters athlete who almost everyone knows, Ron Ortiz, multiple games Masters athlete, multiple champion, and just an all around great dude. He's involved in the Masters Fitness Collective, and I think you're just gonna love this show. We touch on everything in this episode. Before we jump in, I want to let you know this episode is powered by Third Z, your go-to for game-changing sleep recovery. Imagine hitting your workouts harder and waking up feeling unstoppable. That's what Thursday PM Recovery Collagen does for me. It's like a pre-workout, but for your sleep, fueling your body's active recovery processes without any melatonin or sedatives. Just one scoop before bed supports deeper, more restorative sleep so you can crush your fitness goals. Ready to experience the best rest and recovery? Visit thirdsy.com and transform your nights into recovery power hours. Save 20% using the code JasonZZZ. That's Jason with three Zs. Third Z. Third Z, because sleep is the ultimate recovery tool. Uh, tonight, we have a nice special guest here. We've got Ron Ortiz, actually a man who needs no introduction, but we'll introduce him. Uh, a firefighter, husband, father, games athlete, and uh, by the count, a two times games champ, I believe, yes. in a couple mm -hmm. of different age groups. Uh, yep. Uh, really glad you could sit down with us tonight. Um, <laughs> Want to talk about uh, past, present, and future. Get your thoughts and uh, tell us some stories and uh, have a good time. So thank you very, very much, Ron, for, for joining us. Thanks for having me, Rick. And Jason, you guys are uh, – I, I watch your podcast continuously. I love what you guys are doing. Um, and, you know, we were kind of talking about this a little before. Is I love the Masters community. Um, I have mm -hmm. from day one back in a kind of a story back when we were in the, in the back 40 at, in Carson, we literally started, I, I think the first group of guys I was with was like Freddie Camacho, myself, Pat Sprague, like some of the yeah. OG OGs. And we were in this lot and they had us doing sprints and we literally would slide because there was so much gravel on the asphalt. And it was a beat yep. up surface and uneven. So, you know, it's it's coming, I think, to fruition. Like it, it's just it's neat to see where it's ending up and where it's going to. Because my dream has always been to be able to compete until I can't, and mm -hmm. this is allowing that to happen. Not only for myself, but for like yourselves and for other athletes that that are just you know, this stand really stand alone in, in the, in the field. And also for the younger athletes coming up, right. The, the younger athletes, Jason, you hit it the other day in such yeah. a perfect way is that, you know, we all want to be in that next age group. And ironically, yes. if we do that, we're getting older, but at the same time, we're the young guy then. So, yep. Yep. you know, you watch these younger guys coming in and I've always, I've always tried to prod whether it be, you know, the Jason Kalipas or the the Dan Baileys or the Rich Fronings and all of these guys, Neil Maddox, I was always talking to them about, you know, so what are you going to do? Are you going to come to Masters? Yeah. And it was really a hard sell because a lot of those guys, you know, they started out the elite. They were, mm -hmm. you know, that group of guys that everybody kind of stepped aside and they went walking by and, um, I was fortunate enough to get to meet all these guys through Reebok, but they all realized that, you know, time's ticking and it, and it, it does, as it ticks down your position of status as, as that famous young guy is going to mm -hmm. gradually change. And it doesn't have to change in a negative way. It can change to, you know, the really fit older guy as well. Um, so that's kind of how I think they viewed me because I was, I'd go to all these things with Reebok in the Bahamas and I was by far the oldest. I mean, there was plenty of times oh. people were like, yeah, you're old enough to be my dad. And I'd like, my dad. Where, oh. where was your mom during that time? Cause yeah. it may be, yeah. <laughs> it may be a possibility. <laughs> let's do, let's do the numbers. <laughs> yeah. So I, I've been really blessed to see again, the, the gradual progression of where we were where we're coming to and where we're going. So I'm super excited. Um, I, I guess, you know, along with that, I, I've been really uh, blessed to be put in a position too, where I, I started in like 2011 and ended up just getting hooked in 
you know, hook, hook, line and sinker. I, I love this sport. I love being able to compete at an older age. And I competed with some really awesome, awesome people. And we gradually saw that change in Carson. You know, we, um, we went from the back 40 to the second field to, you know, two years later after that, we ended up on the main field and getting to compete like under the big lights type thing at night during, um, in the tennis stadium. So it was really, it was a cool progression. And it was one of those things that, you know, to know how innocent it was when we started. And I remember the first year we all got shorts, you know, that was it shorts and shirts. And And actually I think the first year we didn't even have that may not even had that, but the second year and my shorts were too tight and Reebok's like, Oh gosh, well we can't have that. So they sewed my number on a, on another pair of shorts that were bigger size. And, <laughs> you know, at that time it was like, it was kind of comical cause we're like, we were just kind of happy. To, we really, we were happy to be there. Right. And then as it progressed a little bit further, I remember them coming to me and they're like, Hey, so is there anything you guys feel like you're missing though? And we're like, we'd love to get shoes. The next year they loaded us up with the full gambit of everything. And we thought this is it. And, you know, then I had a couple friends that were very close that traveled with me that there, and they actually were open competitors. And Mm -hmm. this guy had so much stuff he brought back. He literally had to like, like we've had to in years past, you end up having to send a box home. Cause there's just mm-hmm. so much stuff that you collect from whoever it is that's sponsoring the event. So it went from really having nothing to getting something to, I don't think there's that much of a difference in how we are treated. I know there are some, and I'm not going to lie, but I think the disparity is, is gotten better other than the amount of money we make. So <laughs> that's fair. But, that's um, fair. It's uh, that's yeah. eyeballs. That's eyeballs. Mm-hmm. That's viewership. We understand, but the support from those sponsors, mm-hmm. uh, when it's been tied together, has has certainly grown, and it's been yes. good to see. The question yes. is now with we're at the next stage. We'll get to that, you know, this year, mm-hmm. and then also other events too, because there mm-hmm. is there, you know, there's a com- uh, competitive season outside of uh, the game season where there are oh, other sure. events like MFC. You know, mm-hmm. Wadapalooza legends uh, that mm-hmm. are that have age groups and are hoping for signups and hoping for participation. But when you go to something like that, you know, it's it's nice to have some recognition as well. For, oh, for absolutely, the hard work. I, absolutely. I, I and I think, I th- I think you know we kind of hit on that a little bit today too, Kyle and I, I. You know, one of the biggest thing is having sponsors that are willing to come on that are. Um, Every sponsor is valuable, but those sponsors that are willing to put forth something monetarily to be able to help us not only maybe pay out the athletes, but also pay the volunteers. And, yeah. you know, for oh, yes. vol- volunteer, honestly, a volunteer is somebody who's doing it for free, but not necessarily having to give them cash, but give them like a really nice bag of stuff that's valuable and maybe even help right. them with some of their stay or whatever it is, because these people without them, and you know this. I mean, you guys have yep. all competed. It, we would be a b- bunch of monkeys hopping around out there, and nobody would be right. in control of anything. We have right. the judges. We have the people that on the field that run weights and and you know that set up and tear down and and the medical and the you know it's just it's mind boggling how much yes. actually happens. You know, we see a little bit of it as athletes. Um, one of the experiences I had, one of the years I was not competing. I decided to volunteer as a medic and Mm -hmm. here I am standing in this room full of these, uh, it had to be 40 people. And, you know, they introduce everybody's name, my name, and it gets to me and I'm like, yeah, we're on our T's. I'm like the last one. Completely humbled because you're talking about orthopedic surgeons. You're talking about ER surgeons, ER nurses, doctors, I mean, of every caliber and they're all volunteering. Mm-hmm. I guarantee a week it's of their, their salary. Week. Oh, yeah. I know. Right. A week yeah, yeah. of their salary would would probably, you know, pay quite a bit for them, yet they volunteer that time. And that to me was again humbling. I, I and I even said it to them. I I'm like, I am humbled. I never knew the depth that we have as athletes. And if we get hurt, 
I guarantee you're going to get better care yep. there than you would at the hospital. Yep. Yep. So, but it's, you know, again, along with the, the sponsors and, and the vendors, and it's really important to have good participation. And I, I, I'm hoping that there's some listening as we're speaking, because mm-hmm. there's all walks of what we do as masters athletes. And I, I hope that we don't just stick specifically to the physical, physical fitness portion of this, because, you know, we kind of hit on that today as well. Kyle and I is that, you know, if you were, to, if you were to ask, send out a flyer and ask every master's athlete, what are your interests? And you go through and you start looking, it's like, I'm sure a lot of everybody likes to have a brandy at night or mm-hmm. have a, a bourbon at night. So you approach a bourbon company like Johnny Walker and go, Hey guys, look, I have a group of people Captive. that's going to be a one place. Captive audience. For, yeah. And they are a buyer. We are buyers. Masters athletes. Mm-hmm. We buy. Yeah. Uh, one year we had, well, chili goat is a good example. We had chili goat there. Um, this last year and they told us they sold like seven units. So it's like, it's a, you know, it, these are, there's people there that want to spend money and they will spend money if they find something that they're interested in. So I think that's something that, w- that we need to approach as people that put on competitions and also um, maybe even, you know, poke at the ear of the people that are in charge to start doing stuff like that. I kind of heard that from who was it? Uh, Rob Forte, because they run a big event in Australia. And he said what they had done before, or actually during their sign-up, they actually had a part of it that was like a questionnaire. What are your interests? And they said, yeah. During online Online. sign-up. Online sign-up. And as you do that, you like look at all the things these people are interested. Hell, if you have, you know, three quarters of them, they're like, yeah, I like to smoke a cigar occasionally. Why not have a cigar company? Those people are loaded. They would come in and be, it's, it's not even like a billionth of their advertising budget to have them there. It doesn't mean people are going to be walking around smoking cigars all day long. Right. And it's not just athletes. It's the, it's the uh, friends, it's the coaches, Mm -hmm. families. I mean, there are other people that these Mm -hmm. events that more than likely have similar interests or are considering something like that too. It's that, Mm -hmm. you know, athlete, and spreads. Sure. So that, that to me is like something that we really need to start. We need to start being like a little more in tune with things because for the longest time, and I can tell you again, backstory, one of the first years I was at the games, 2011, I want to say there was a handful, maybe 10, 10. And and I'm exaggerating if it's 10, 10 booths. And it Mm -hmm. was the upstairs area above the tennis arena. And there was nothing. I mean, I'm telling you, yeah, Ultra shoes, ultra yeah. shoes had just started. That guy had started his company. He had a pair of shoes cut in half and he showed how he did this, that, and the other. Um, Reebok was there with a, it had to be maybe a 40 by 40 tent. And that was mm-hmm. the gist of it. And then I think RX Smart Gear was there too, but it was just like homemade ropes that were like crimped together at the edges. So it was <laughs> kind of, it's, it was kind of cool to see, but you know, that's what's available. I mean, the people that we have coming to these events are, you know, the Ricks and the Ron's and the Jason's and, and these other people, even the Kevin Kester's, these other people that it's, I don't want to say we have money to throw around, but we do have disposable income that if we find something That's we what, like, we're, we're probably going to focus gonna on. It. Yeah. We're going to focus yeah. on our interests. I'm yep. not out there for anything else. Oh, yeah, Exactly. I, I agree. And I, now yeah. I, I do want to take you back to 2012. You're speaking of okay. 2011 at the games. 2012, <laughs> I was in the crowd watching the Masters out there on the back yep. parking lot. Yeah. Uh, we also were watching a team. We came out to uh, support a team from our um, from our, our affiliate. And okay. there was uh, a, a Masters athlete that I knew from a couple hours away. So we were there watching as well. And I remember – the vendor village was small. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, it felt big because it was, you know, something new and different and fresh. It's the first time I'd really seen it on that scale. But then right. when you compare it, you fast forward it 10 years to what it's turned mm-hmm. out to be in oh, Madison yeah. and what we believe it could be at our, our events mm-hmm. blows you away. Blows you away. Oh, yeah. But that, that, par- sure. that parking lot, I burpees to the plate on the parking lot. Oh my lot gosh. And just, Do you remember that? Just, 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, you guys were literally playing in the backyard, I think. It was. Um, it had to be so hot. Was, it had to be so hot in the parking lot, right? It, it was. And, and I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, telling yeah, you right now, we were fortunate, though, because California, that weather there, I think there was one, only one year that I competed, nah, probably two years I competed there where I was like, I, I got, literally got heat stroke. One of them was 16. Hmm. But um, yeah. one of them uh, was, oh uh, gosh, we were on the field, like on the new, the, the field where they did the, the log run and stuff. One of the, oh, one the, the soccer stadium. Before, soccer yeah. stadium. Not yeah. in the stadium, though. We were actually outside the other field, the, the other um, Oh, the football. track. Mm-hmm. The track, yes. And oh, okay. that, oh, yeah. they had us doing <laughs> burpees on that surface, and it was mm-hmm. like we, some of the guys' hands blistered. It was so hot. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I mean, did it get hot? Yes. But for the most part, that temperature there was so nice and so tempered usually. It's like seven, in the 70, 75 degrees the sun was really hot, but once you got in the shade, it was fairly comfortable. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it was uh, it was a neat neat time, and it's Experience. funny because when we left Carson, I have to tell you, it was that like oh, it's never going to be the same. You know, it's never going to be the same. And then we got to Madison. It's like oh, this is this is pretty good. You know, the first yeah. year, Jace, you were there the first year, weren't you? I was. Where it was, like, I was there to. I was there as as a spectator first year. So, so the poop smell in in that <laughs> barn that we were in was like horrendous. I mean, oh. I think they had just gotten yeah. done. Yeah, they had just gotten. Done. I did and not have that. It's horrendous. Yeah, with a farm animal show Dude. or something. Yeah, you want to know? You want to know? Still a, talk about that. A secret about the year that I went to um, uh, be a spectator in 2017. I didn't watch the Masters. Oh, did you? I was. I was heck? so. No, I was so. Um, I was so uh, frustrated with myself that I didn't qualify that year. I was so salty. I was yeah. like, it's, it's actually going to be more, I'm going to be more sad if I go watch masters than mm-hmm. if I sit over here and drink a Bud Light and watch the individual events. And so that's yeah, what I did. Right. I look back now, of course, and I, I regret, I wish I was there watching because then I qualified the next year. And, and yeah. But no, that first year, I didn't even go into the masters area because I, I, I just was, I wanted to be there so bad. It, it, it was like an ache. It, it almost yeah. hurt, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm t- I, I've been there. I've been there with you. And it's, yeah. it's like the times that I've missed, even even last year. So we went last year. And I don't, I don't know if you kind of remember what happened. I actually, I was right. I was right in the mix. I was like number four going into the final workout I had to do. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I botched it so bad. I can't even tell you, bro. <laughs> and oh, no. it, it was the burpee box jump over. Yes. Um, what was it? Burpee box jump overs and was thrusters, or uh, yeah, it was one this of the was, qualifiers. The final, oh, over, the semifinal, over, yeah. this overhead is like, squat. Yeah. Oh, and burpee so box jump overs. Yeah, twenty twenty one's final. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. And the the rope climb and the and the kettlebell step ups, all that business. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes. This year, and this year. I decided, I decided I was going to do because I read the directions and I'm there with my crew and we're going over it and they're like, "What do you think would be faster?" And I was like, "I go, let me try." You know, just and I tried stepping over and they're going, "Bro, that's way faster." And I was like, "Done, let's do it. We're gonna kill this thing. We're gonna, you know, go to here. We go. We're going to Madison." Well, it wasn't. It was box jump over step down, so you could step oh, down on the other no. side, but not step up and over. So I com- did it. Completed it. Ironically, I mean, we had a lot going on. My wife had thyroid surgery and some other stuff. So yeah. she had been diagnosed with cancer. So we were like heading right after I did that. Like an hour after that, we came home, grabbed our luggage, went to the airport, heading off to the airport, to, um, to uh, Atlanta. And um, wow. I look, she's looking on the phone. She goes, well, do you want to know where you're at? And I was like, nah, not really, hon. She goes, well, let's just look. So she looks and she goes, uh oh, you got zero on that workout, Uh-oh. and I was like, "What?" Oh man! And she goes, "Yeah, you got zero," and I was like, "I don't understand." And then we started, and then sure enough, I get like the email. text, yeah, and it was the, very yeah. clear. And it was, it was, it was almost like, "Bro, what, what did you do? This is ridiculous." I felt like such a <laughs> schmuck, and right. I was like, "Right," I felt like a schmuck because it was 
99.99999% my fault. All I was done, the only one point zero zero one percent was somebody going, yeah, that's that seems a lot faster, and me going that's, with it, and I I should have read the directions closer. You know, that's it. So, yeah. were you so, you were solo? I was. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. there's a lot of anxiety that goes into qualifiers. I did for yeah. years. I was the only one doing qualifiers solo, and I would read and highlight the movement standards. Underline. Yeah. Um, I. Oh, yeah. oh, so, in a, you know, it's just the most nerve wracking thing. Um, last year, I actually did uh, the, the quarterfinals and semifinals in a large group. Mm -hmm. And I still did my whole printing highlighting. Mm -hmm. And they're reviewing the notes just before competing. I'm like, of guys, course. like, I've already, we already done our fit. Let's start. Let's go. They're like, well, me, can bro. you, um, can you set down the barbell? I was like, Bro, I what what's what's your I know this whole thing. What's your question? I look I I got this memorized. <laughs> the professor uh, is here. Professor I got this. No, bro. But I but wish, on the same, wish, the same note, you could you can easily just have one little thing off like that. Right. Um like, I mean I typed in a score wrong one year during semifinals. Yes. And I got Yeah, I I I I just I just typed it in completely wrong. Thankfully yeah. they watched the video and they corrected yeah. it for me. Um it, because I I all I had done was put in wrong, but I had a, a it was a, it was a pretty devastating experience for that moment thinking like, well, I, I'm not going, I can't believe yeah. it. All my plans yeah. are yeah. for not right now. Yeah. It's pretty scary. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It, you know, it, it is much, I think, you know, I, I kind of like alluded this today again. I keep mentioning things that we talked about earlier today because I talked with Kyle, but you know, one of the things is too, is that when they narrowed the field down to 10, that was a game changer. It really was. It's like, absolutely. Yeah. And I hate to say it and sound pompous, but 20 is doable. You know, 20 is long. doable. <laughs> you know, you're it's going, so I got it. less stress. Yeah. 20, I can get in, not a problem. My challenge to myself was always don't ever be in the top, the bottom 10. I always wanted to be in the top 10. But then when that number is set for you, it's like, that's all you can be is top 10. It's like, right. oh shit, this is yeah. a whole different ball of wax. Right. I mean, so, as we get older into the age groups, it gets us oh, yeah. a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Uh, I well, got you. See, and, yeah. You're, you're, so, you're so involved with MFC, and they run larger larger fields for, right. for all, all the age groups, showing that right. uh, from, a, from an event running standpoint, it can be done. Mm -hmm. now, oh, for sure. Yeah. Now, I, I, what I, I don't want to, I don't want people listening to think that, oh, he's not thinking through the, the next iteration of it cost wise and mm -hmm. outfit wise. And, and we're talking about a master's event and not mm -hmm. being connected to the elites and the teams and all that. I mean, mm -hmm. I get that. But yeah. from a field of play standpoint, you've proven and legends have proven mm -hmm. they can run large fields. So then here you comes can. Wadapalooza and they shrink these masters, unless you're on a team. Like you guys, mm -hmm. they shrink these fields like 50 and overhead five this year. Yeah. And up. I mean, and so what, 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 what? I've talked to Dylan. That. Yeah. I've talked to Dylan okay. at length and he said, the biggest thing, honestly, Ron is they go by and, and we kind of went over this stuff a little bit today as well in the podcast. It's like numbers drop severely. Um, like mm -hmm. if you look at the participation and we just ran the numbers today from matter of fact, I just happened to have the numbers right here. Hey, somebody is prepared. Um, look at this. Well, no, because like this is what we had done oh. earlier. Um, you're looking at like almost 21,000 people, right? 21,000. Um, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. No, hold on. Let me look at my notes again here. Uh, yeah, 21,000 athletes in the 30, 35 to 39. Okay. 60,000 females, 16,000 females. And then from that point, as we get down to the older age group, which is this, the 65 plus, it's mm -hmm. 1,300 oh, athletes sure. yeah. total. Mm -hmm. So that, that gradual decrease is what happens kind of with Wadapalooza. And then they also have to think about um, as much as I hate to say it, but they're thinking about what's going to bring in the, the sponsors and the money. And that's why they had the elite teams. That's why they have those other things. Now mm -hmm. I'm not okaying that. And I'm not poo pooing that that's their deal. That's what they they've committed to. And that's what they want to do on a corporate level. But I think for us as MFC and then for us as legends and for us as, 
you know, the CrossFit, now Masters CrossFit Games, we have the ability to draw those people, those type of Mm -hmm. um, vendors, sponsors, and those type of things. And I think, again, if we concentrate on doing that, we can really have a great event. Um, I would like to see our numbers high. Uh, I know what they did is they did, if I look through it right, there is a drop in, um, it's, it goes down to a group of 20 rather than group of 40, right? For the lo- lower mm-hmm. athletes at, right. Correct. um, at the yeah, game, 60 and up, I think. Mm-hmm. Where and I, and I get be. it. Yeah. yeah. I get it. You know, um, my, my biggest thing and, and having a field that large, are we going to have like a, 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 an eventual like cut somewhere along the line? Because competing against 40 people is interesting but at least a couple of heats always yes unless always. it's a it's gonna mass be, start run or something like that or correct yeah. mm-hmm. but there gradually somewhere within the three days or four days it's going to be there has to be a cut along the way because you know you are going to always have the outliers who are the little ninjas or the super strong guys and those mm-hmm. guys will be, be – I, I promise you you're going to have those guys getting in in a group of 40. You will have mm-hmm. those guys. They'll do Absolutely. just enough to be able to make it in and have that. I think the number 20 for years and years was really good because it kind of held that to a minimum. And I'll tell you from a standpoint of being like one of the stronger guys in my age group for a very long time, that helped me get in. As I started Mm -hmm. to work with other coaches on my gymnastics and my aerobic capacity and these other things is where I was able now to compete at a much higher level and know that I'm going to be able to be in that top three, top four, you know, most of the time. So the larger groups are interesting. I'm I'm really interested to see the mix up because you're going to always have the people, the Jason Grubbs and the Kevin Kesters and these other people that are just – just dominate very well rounded and are always up there period end of discussion yep and and but you're also going to have a big mix up with those people that are just if the if the workouts sway one way or the other it's going to make a big difference for those people that Mm -hmm. are the gymnastic people or the strength people so that's my my two cents on on the, but I I like the idea well, of forty because it's inclusive and that's I think that's a yeah, key thing for us as masters you know now and you came I, from, I think it's oh go ahead yeah oh I was, I was going to just reinforce that point with that idea of having forty um, at a games masters event or or you know even at MFC or at Legends we had large fields mm-hmm. uh, and what that tended to create in the condensed area was that feeling of uh, of electricity. There's, mm-hmm. there's a lot of things happening all the time. There's a lot mm-hmm. of spectators, even if some of those spectators are other athletes um, yes. or their families or their friends, but it, it creates, um, <laughs> there's always something magic with, um, with a, ca- in a camera. So I, I used yeah. to think of it like this and, and this isn't actually, this isn't my, to- this isn't the completion of my point, but um, you know, I, I used to take high end photos of, of, you know, people getting married it's, it, it, their engagement photos were always part of it. And they would go to, they want to go to like an exotic location in Colorado in the mountains. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, that's fine. You know, that's like a half hour or an hour drive. We're going to shoot for like 20 minutes. We're going to get great stuff and we're get out of, and I w- always want to say like, you know what, if we just go down to the park, like right by my house, <laughs> right. I, I can use my camera. It will look like we're in the middle of, of Aspen. You, there's no yeah. house. I can make the illusion <laughs> in this yeah, park yeah. look correctly. Um, yeah, and so that's why I think in a it, when you have an event that's condensed, but you have a large field in there, there's a lot of things happening. It creates that uh, the visual of mm-hmm. man, this is a really electric, uh, exciting event. Um, and yes, and the reality is there's actually there are more people there, there are more fans there. There's yeah. there is actual electricity, but it also looks good for live streams and right. uh, yes. you know, and still photos for the media that's yeah. there. Um, Absolutely, for Masters Athletes, where we don't have as many butts in seats. But Mm -hmm. um, if we create that, I mean, the whole idea, part of it is like, you know, when someone sees a live stream of a master's event and sees people there watching, I want the people at home to feel like FOMO. Like, yeah, I should have gone. I should have gone to Birmingham to watch this one this year or like, yeah, should have made that drive. Um, Yeah. Because 
it's it's uh, something I always <laughs> I've always had every time like I watched the Rogue Invitational or something I'm like man I should have just gone why am I, I know. why don't I just go I should have been there yeah, um, yeah. And, and so I, I think there's I think that's fun but that's uh, that's the positive for forty I also agree that in a large field it creates all those as a competitor it creates those complications where you're like Absolutely. it's just me against Vlad and I got to beat yeah. him by like two things he's got to be and then you have like some guy that's like a I don't know. He's a road runner. This just comes and, and messes the whole thing up because he's very right. good and takes he happens points, to be in the top takes 40. Points away. Yeah, he takes points. Yeah. But yep. we're, we got to be ready for all that. It's a slightly yep. different game when it's against 40 versus 10. So Absolutely. you got to play that, play those cards. That happened. I, that happened to me in 20, is it 21, 20, 20, the guy, the guy, the Dutch guy came out of nowhere mm -hmm. and yeah. won. Yep. And I was like, who the hell is this guy? Where did he come right. from? I had never even yeah. heard of the guy. Was like, and he's the nicest guy in the world. He just happened to be like the perfect stature and everything for every event they had. And it was yeah. funny because Pat, Pat Spragan and I are like, you know, we're going out for the, the one event. It was the deadlift, uh, whatever, like yoke carry or something like that. And we're going, we're going to crush this. This guy's a little skinny guy. He annihilated us. Bro, it was like left us standing still. I was like, who is this guy? Somebody's got to check him. <laughs> how was this? Exactly. You're like, yes, yeah, make sure he gets tested one. And two, exactly. how was this not on our radar? I, yeah. you know, I take oh. pride in having a good radar. Speaking of Pat Sprague, who is, who was on our show episode number, yeah. I don't know, 40 something. Um, he just did. Um, did I just see, did I just see him do like five deadlifts? At yes. Over 500 five, pounds on Instagram. Yeah, like 505. 505 or yeah, yeah, yeah. Set of five. The dude's over 55 doing five deadlifts over 505. That's insane. He's a stud, bro. He's a stud. Yeah, he's it's a stud. Just, I hope he's I, listening because we I saw, listen. we saw Pat. I, I had, I, I, getting to work at, he, you know, he kept going. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Kevin, Pat, and I competed at Waterpalooza. How fun. That's pretty and good. I'm telling you right now, I going into it, I was like, guys, you listen, I've been working out. I'm trying to get in shape. But then, and I don't know if you can see, I actually, this is my middle finger too. But I ended up crushing it between two dumbbells to the point oh, no. where it literally popped like a grape. I broke oh. the tip of it. It was broken. Like the tip was broken. I was in a cast for like a week, stitches, the whole thing, three weeks probably three weeks, two and a half weeks before Waterpalooza. Oh, so gross. I called them That's immediately terrible. and I was like, I was going, guys, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to work. This is going to be really tough. I hope we can do this. And the whole time Kevin's going, bro, you only broke your finger. You're going to be fine. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, bro, it's broken though. But we got there and it was a blast, bro. I cannot say yeah. enough about those two individuals are just amazing people. But Pat is just a dear, dear person. And I, I can't even tell you, I, I would go through fire with that guy. He is just, he's an amazing dude. Amazing people. Yep. yep. Sorry. A little, little. Totally off. agree. I, no, I love it. Yeah. I love that we, we've got a little shout out to Pat. I, I hope that oh, if yeah. he's listening, he's got a big smile on his face because we, we I hope think he he's, yeah, he's fantastic. Uh, big fan. So um, when you, look at the future of, of CrossFit. How old are you now? 58. 58. You age up in, yeah. a, in two years. Uh, but so you're in the meaty part of the age group. I am 48 mm -hmm. in the media yep. part. Um, what, it, what does it look like for you this year? Is this, are you making a run for the games? You know, finger healed, the open yeah. starts. What's, what's your plan for this year? So we have a lot going on with, with our family. I'm, you know, newly married yes. within the last four years and we have a lot that we're trying to like do, um, a lot of things, you know, we're just trying to get our lives together and, you know, sure. being the fact that it's like, it's very easy to do that stuff, but the worst thing in the world, I think is, you know, having somebody who's a professional Sherpa and that's, you know, my wife is amazing. She is the brains behind what happened with MFC this year. Mm -hmm. And I will yep. say that, I mean, there's a lot of other people that were there that, helped and did everything, but she put together a team of leads that was phenomenal. And from that point, it was this, this trickle down effect 
And I watched her and she, the care, the to detail and everything. And then as it came together, it's just like, you could just see the stress release off of her. So she's done a lot. And, and we have that coming up again this year. And I'm like, you know, I just don't want to be unfair. Um, if, mm-hmm. And you know how it is, Jason. When you yes. start training for it, we become the most selfish person around. And that, I don't want to do that used. again this year. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to compete. I, I actually just got my badge and it says, what, you know, 13 years or whatever it is in a row or nice. 14 years. So yep. it's, you know, it's awesome. I love it. I want to be there. I'm going to be FOMO big time watching Jason out there and possibly Rick out there like competing, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm not chasing it by any means. I'm going to participate because mm-hmm. I, I want to, I want to grow it's, us. It's what you yeah. do at this time of year. As we yeah, exactly. It, yeah. Like, yeah, that's yeah, the, you got to stress yeah. out. Why yeah, would you want to exactly. stress out like everybody else does? About stupid I, shit? The month, the month <laughs> of March has not been the same, uh, has not been stress-free for me for years. Yeah, I mean, years. just starting with the open. Now, now it's maybe a little less stress in the open, but this whole, sp- the spring just becomes yeah. this ball of stress. Yeah. But that's what we do it. Why we do it? Yeah, we like. I it. love it, and and it's kind of cool because you know we we were kind of talking about we we're segueing into the, the, the future of the sport, and um, mm-hmm. I'm excited to see, you know, again earlier today we ran a lot of the numbers and started going through all the stuff, but more than that, I'm super excited because it's night. Na- now it's giving us the opportunity to be highlighted in our own event. Um, nice. And I'm not too sure how they're, you know, what they're going to be doing as far as like the casting it, you know, and that's the biggest thing. Hopefully it's not, you know, the same type of thing that we have Single. to go on in that. I mean, if it's, it's, it, 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 oh. it, it won't be, <laughs> it, we would be highly disappointed if it's a ring doorbell on, uh, you know, one of the <laughs> rafters. At the oh, convention center, oh, was that, was I that think, a ring doorbell? I, think, I thought it. I thought no, it was no an but animal. I think a ring doorbell no, actually has better a, a, a dash cam. Better video had, quad, I think yeah. it was a dash cam because dash a cam. Uh, yeah. yeah, ring doorbell actually has better resolution than what we yeah, have. And you can talk you back know. to it too. Yeah, I yeah, had, but no, oh, there. Believe me, there was a lot of talking back to that still camera when you tuned in. Oh, the comments sure, the first bro. day were oh my god off the charts. I'll tell you, I just started to watch the. Uh, Savan behind the scenes and they had day one and I had to think of that camera when they just had a clip of of the upper age groups like 65 plus and 60 to 64 run out on the field for events one and two and Savan had a really nice up close shot of them lifting and I'm thinking "Hmm, the irony of that was there we were all you know hundreds of feet back in the little pinhole camera yeah yeah, it didn't matter. It was, but it was he, silly. You couldn't even, you uh, couldn't the, tell when they were changing the stuff no, when the athletes were running no. on. It was like the same thing. It was nothing. Yeah, it was. It, terrible. You know, we when you're behind the scenes, be- when you're when you're in the warm up area, you were always kind of watching the live feed to see what mm-hmm. the group ahead of you is doing. You're kind of yeah, trying right. to get a gauge for the workout. And yeah, at four in the 45 year old division, we're trying to watch the teenagers. Right? They're they're actually yeah. it's a pretty good gauge. How are the teenagers doing in this workout? We yeah. go right after them. Um. But uh, yeah, with the dash cam footage, we could not see clearly <laughs> what was going on out there. So the bar is very low. Whatever yeah. they do right. this year, anything, good. any anything is better than that. So yeah. what I, I and I I was I, I share this with somebody the other day. Like we, I don't think as masters athletes, we're not asking for PGA level coverage where you've got mm-hmm. cranes and you got the big cameras with the huge you know, $200,000 lenses. We're not looking for like it, it, Super Bowl coverage. What we're yeah. hoping for is like, man, just, just give our families, our communities at home right. the opportunity to see us. And right. if there's commentators, that's a huge bonus. If there's mm-hmm. stories that could be woven into that, that's great. But really, right. we just want to be able to have this be seen by a, a larger audience, especially family, friends, yeah. community at home. And, absolutely, you know, I, for me, I have a I have a batch of fans that want to watch this thing, yeah. uh, and then what they can do is they can use that footage, they can archive that, it can be used into the future mm-hmm. for promotion. It's just so yeah. simple that uh, again, it doesn't have to be a, a half a million dollar or million dollar, however much is spent to make that happen. Yeah. Um, just it can't be 
it's got to be somewhere in between. And I know there's solutions. I've, I've, Oh, I've, there are, I, uh, there are, you know, one are. of the things we had looked at and we had talked about, um, and I thought was super interesting anyways, is, you know, to even put a, a, a main camera up across the field and then each lane have almost like a, a camera holder. So somebody can bring your iPod up and just pop it in there. Oh, yeah. And each yeah, like person that. Like, if, let's say your family's like, oh, I want to get him on this. Right. So they put their iPod in there and they could just. Boom, they've just got live yeah. feeds running. That'd be Absolutely. incredible. Like, how many Instagram lives are going on? There's there's 20 going on an hour, every sure, hour, yeah. every heat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not, that, how it's not easy the worst would that idea. Be? No, yeah. and there's a company yeah, right. that actually will, they do a live feed similar to that for you. You just got to connect into it. And it's like a fee of, I don't know how much it is, sure. but it's sure. for, for me, I'm like, that's a good way to cut costs. Cause you know, live feed is, right. that is the most expensive part of any competition. Right. Literally. No, no I think as we're fine. Good. Here's, here's the other thing. Like, it, okay. I, I just moved to Alabama. And one thing I'm learning about Alabama is that they really care about football. Very, very mm-hmm. much. Very, very much. Um, and not just not just at their colleges, which are like the stadiums are larger than NFL stadiums, but Absolutely. their high schools and mm-hmm. high school teams have broadcast booths um, and 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 multiple cameras on the field for their Friday night lights. Uh, these are big deals. So there's multiple even within that realm. There's there's opportunities there. Uh, and yeah. I know that the Legends team is is looking at many many opportunities. I know they're yeah. they're looking they're leaving no stone unturned on everything they can do. Oh, that's good. Right for the Masters games, but uh, but I literally was having a conversation the other day, and I was like, "Oh, there's a little town north of Birmingham, a little suburb, and it has a professional booth that they run right. for the high school team." I'm like, "I'm sure. gonna call that guy if there's yeah. not something up. I'm gonna get the high school coverage team down there, and you know, some teenagers with iPhones to interview yeah. Rick when he comes off the floor. Like, Rick, what was that? How was hey, that worked out? All we you know? have to yeah. do is prom- promise some Chipotle afterwards. They'll be happy. <laughs> good They'll to go. That's it's a, easy." It's easy. The cheapest, kids, the cheapest event it. ever. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, I, I, I think that's partner with so Chick Fil A. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah, that's that's the key to a really successful event is to either have like Legends had done a couple of years ago when they were at Mayhem and have that basically at the end of the day review of what happened. And that adds a lot to it. Mm-hmm. And have yes. even somebody floating around. You could have somebody floating around with a, you know, iPod on a Kimball is what it's called or whatever. That <laughs> yeah, yeah. allows the them yeah. to, you know, to to video and do what they can do during the process and have a couple yeah. other good cameras out there that are like on the shoulder of people that know how to how to use it. And we can actually do a really good job. And that would cut yeah. a lot of the aggravation from people that totally. aren't there wanting to see it. And, you know, as far as the growth of what we're doing, I mean, everything started out pretty simple, right? Everything did. Even the process mm-hmm. with with the games and, and everything like that. And it's grown gradually. And I think it's easy enough now with the technology available for that to happen with us, us as masters. And that's kind of like we, we are really trying to um, – especially with MFC, we're really trying to, to grow our event in a way that's going to be um, very pal- palatable, uh, palatable to watch, mm-hmm. you know, where you're not frustrated because you can't see and this, that, and the other <laughs> yeah. and have the MCs that we need to make it exciting. Cause I know Jason and you, Rick, both when you compete, if you have somebody like Dylan, on the oh, floor those, and they're, those they're voices announcing in your you. head. Oh yeah. They're, yeah. It's, you're so comfortable with the way they sound. We're all fortunate mm-hmm. to have a very um, solid and consistent crew that has just yes. followed and called upon all the time. And boy, when you hear yeah. them say your name, you're like, Oh yeah. Time yeah. to go. It's, ex- it's yeah. exciting. And it's it does, fun. it builds that excitement. And, and um, but that's a big part of like the, the process of growing what we do as masters athletes. And then, you know, again, having having our own event, I think, is really exciting. It, you know, I, I guess from a standpoint of when it first they first announced it, I, I kind of felt really shunned. You know, at first I was like, "This, what the heck, man?" Yep. You know, they don't care about us. This is BS. And then, kind of, some talks started going on, and we heard rumors of some of some of these talks, and 
And then we started yep. like getting more information. And I think that's the biggest thing is information is the key to like calm. And without that information, there's a mm-hmm. lot of speculation and that can lead to a lot of damaging things that are being said and done and whatever. Yep. But I yep. would really, really like to see this event be a huge success. Um, would I have liked to have seen Masters Fitness Competition take it over? Absolutely, I would have. But, sure. you know, it is what sure. it is. That's, that's okay. where, it's, where it stands. And the beauty of it is it, it still allows us to have our event for the people who aren't yeah, going to make the games, you know? Um, so it, it offers a lot. My biggest concern is that group of days on the end of that month and the beginning of the next month and the end of that month are packed. Oh yeah. And we August, kind of, yeah. yeah. August, September are going oh to be busy. Yeah. You yeah, got, we have, yeah. We have the, the e- teens and masters at the yep. same time. Yep. We have, the, the the open athletes in you know um, Texas, and it's yep. gonna it's gonna be yep. draining for the volunteers that are yep. usually the mainstay for what we do, right? And that's a right. scary thing. It's like we, I mean, we continually are like recruiting and trying to get people yes. to volunteer because without a good volunteer base, you are in trouble, man. You will, yeah. and, and what about have, uh, you've got Wadapalooza in mm-hmm. California at the end of September mm-hmm. to, to round that out? And yep. Wheel Wad is that same weekend as Wadapalooza, yep. that's another another double weekend. Yep, uh, MFC this year is October. What, what, no, what date? Uh, September, the end of September or beginning of October. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, it's, like, it's tight in that it's tight in that range. There's just there's crazy, always a lot of bro. things going on. This just happens to be a very consolidated season around there, mm-hmm. right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I think it's going to be integrated, Rick. Sorry. No, 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 no. Just taking it another no. direction. I have a fun question. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I think it's really, um, it's exciting for us as masters to have um, the the competition on setting on its own. Um, uh, like I said in the beginning, there's a little bit of you know anxiety, a little bit what's going to, what this going to do, how is this going to affect? But it's key for all of us as masters athletes, regardless of how much speculation and whatever we have to participate. Because without the participation, it's gonna it's gonna make it more difficult to have an event that is going to be awesome, right? And right. that's that's true with any event. I mean, I can I can yeah. I can t- tell you right now, like. Wadapalooza started off very small. I just sent a buddy of mine mm-hmm. yep. um, a video clip of when we competed one of the first years at Wadapalooza. And it was like, it was, you know, we did bear crawls and like uh, Turkish getups with like a barbell. And it was, it was incredible, but it was so small. And then to see it grow every year, every year, every year, Guido and his wife, and they, it switched over to more of a corporate setting. But it still has that really cool feel to it. So I think we can do the same as Masters Athletes for this competition. But we just got to get really good participation. Make it, yeah. uh, make it the, f- yeah. the uh, festival feel. Like, yes. You know, yes. Yes. Like right. uh, you have with Guadalupe. Now the locations for all these events are different. And the allure mm-hmm. of the, the, the desire to go to Miami in the winter <laughs> takes place. But you know what? Elites are going to Texas and yeah. uh, mm-hmm. masters yeah. are coming to Birmingham and can go to Fort Wayne or back over to Arizona. I mean, there's going to be options. Yes, uh, yeah, there will be. All right. Yep. Start budgeting now, folks. That's <laughs> the biggest seriously. thing. I, that, yeah. yeah. That's, I'm, I'm, there's I'm a lot scared. of things to do this this uh, this year. My biggest thing, too, is the, the, the pull, right? So um, there's definitely going to be a financial pull on those of us that are masters athletes that love to watch the young athletes as well. Now you're going to go shoot two weeks later. I have to go to go watch the masters or I have to go compete. Are they, are you going to take the time Jason or Rick out of your de- your training at that point to go I watch know. those guys? And it, I guarantee it's not going to happen. Yeah. No, you're I'm not going to have too many. Yeah. You, you are going. You can okay. still train though. You're used to training yeah, at the trailer. He's, right? he, That's not he, fair. He, I will. He, I will. I will. He needs a four foot box, and he he's fine. Yeah, something to hang. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's will. good. But it is. It's it's one of those things where uh, I'll go out to the to the individual games uh, because it's it, it, that's more of a 
it's more of a uh, it's more of a business choice. I mean, part sure. of my yeah. work is is um, you know is just getting out there and and, and seeing people. So that there's a yep. business side of that. But I also spent what we spent three or four weeks in Dallas last summer in our RV travels. So um, I created a relationship with a the gym there. So likely what I'll end up doing is training, going to spectate at the games and then training, probably, you know, training, training in yeah. the morning, work, go, you have go to the games, training at night. And uh, I'm such a germaphobe that I may either just make the drive myself or fly. I like, I don't want to fly because I, like, yeah. I mean, like it's two weeks before the games. I don't want to overdo anything. I don't want to get sick. For so sure. these are all the yeah. things that like, yeah. I will be, uh, yep. You know, I'm not, I'll be knuckle bumping people. Like, great to see yeah. you. Great to see you. Shaking hands and then immediately <laughs> taking a, a hand sanitizer <laughs> bath. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I, I could get overkill if I overthink it. But that, um, no. but no, you're right. It, there is a financial. You protect yourself. And time budget. Yeah. Like, well, how can, yeah. can, what can you get to and go watch? Um, mm-hmm. And of course, there things are split now, right? Where you could go to the games before and see everyone. You could see teens, adaptive, masters, uh, yes. you know, whatever, elite, everyone you teams. wanted to. But, yep, um, everybody teams uh, now that's different and it's year one where i think we we've, we're all sitting back thinking like okay let's let's Where just adapt to what year one looks like and hopefully mm-hmm. year two things start to settle out and and, and not be mm-hmm. so con- consolidated and condensed yeah yeah uh, i mean i would perfect world i'd love to compete at the games sometime in july yep. go to the individual uh games in august Go to yep. MFC at some point in September or early yep. October, whenever that is. You know, head out to Legends in November, and that's the season. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great that, season. Yeah. It's funny you say that because that was my first, my very first thought was, okay, cool. So we can actually do it prior to the games, and that's not going to take any, any, in anything out of the games. And it, not saying not that it's going to. Or anything, but I'm right. telling you right now. It's going to be a strain for some families. And I, I even was alluding to it the other day thinking there are families that, and we know, have kids that are competing. Mm-hmm. And the, the parents compete or one of the parents compete. Yeah, The right. strain on that is like ridiculous. I feel bad for those people because now it's like, okay, somebody's going to have to That's make a, a tough choice. Year. Where are you going to go? Yeah, you know, yeah. Well, Or dad and, goes and, to compete and, and the kid goes over there. Talking to Bob, you know, they, that was uh, honestly, not their first choice to go and overlap. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, mm-hmm. yep. as we've all learned, given the short window that everybody had uh, to operate with finding venues and times and places this year, I think next year the calendar sorts itself out. I'm hoping, right? Uh, it sorts itself out yeah. a little bit better. But yeah, this year there's going to be some some overlap, yeah. some conflict, and uh, yeah. um, let's just hope the voices are heard but are not too mm-hmm. loud. Yeah. We don't want to. Know. I, I know. <laughs> right, right. The positive. In, yeah, that's a good point. In the first years, that, like when we first started, the games were always pretty much um, the end of July, close to the beginning of August. Like, I, I can tell that's, you, I think yes. 11 yeah. to 13, that's when they were. And it was like mm-hmm. that easy spot because it was kind of right in the middle of summer, hot as blazes, but at the same time, families were out of school because of vacation and whatever. Right. And I think then it was like, pretty much like a really easy thing. Um, but it's leaked uh, later and yeah. later and later. Each, yeah. Even in the yeah. Yeah. drifting yeah. to a point. Yeah. It's yeah. drifting, drifting. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I think we can probably reel it back again. It's just, I get it. I mean, you need time mm-hmm. to put together. Like we start with MFC this year. They started probably two weeks before they debriefed after they debriefed. And they already started like contacting people and what's going to happen. And they have their leads in, in order and that, and that, you know, they're contacting sponsors and vendors and, you know, finding a location. Cause the first year we did MFC, we did it downtown at a, uh, the Hilton, the, the Hilton Col- Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. It was so amazing. That. Cause it was like hotels all the way around it. You just had to walk yeah. across the street. Go to your hotel. I, you walk back I across. Took when an your elevator up and down from the competition yeah. floor back up to my room. It, it was, was fantastic. It Stopped was at Starbucks perfect. on the way. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but and we tried to get that venue again, and guess yeah. what? Unavailable. It's booked. it's impossible. Yeah. It's booked out for like three years now. So oh, unless we were, to, that's interesting. Oh, it's it's massive, huh. and we we had figured the space that we have now. We could actually take that whole space, not just one mm-hmm. of the units. We could take the whole space in that co- that um, arena 
and have mm-hmm. the whole thing, but it's not available because we we happened to hit it perfectly because of COVID and nobody was there. Mm-hmm. So I can only imagine the stress that, that Bob and those guys are going through trying to get things organized and, and you know, the, the, everything that they need in such a short time span, because they were literally given nine months. It, it wasn't right. even a full and, year. And, and as we learned now that uh, the country is fully open, that you just mm-hmm. you can't book something that large with that short nope. of a window. No. So, but 2020, yeah. 2025 is being worked on. So fingers crossed yeah. there. Oh, yeah. We'll do you, that. And you have to. It has to be done. That's what. That's why they they usually book a three year thing like a deal. on each venue. Yeah, because then they know what they where, they know where they're at. That's easy enough. Now it's just a yeah. matter of okay, let's get all Fill the small it. stuff together. But um, um, yeah, I I do want to uh, competition wise, real quick, two questions for you here. Uh, Talk to me. In, in 2012, mm-hmm. um, I think speaking of the way the calendar laid out. I, there probably aren't that many. I can think of a couple, but there aren't that many athletes who competed in the Masters competition, but then also went team. And yeah. I wanted to know what you, what were your uh, takeaways from, you know, that experience, and that probably makes for a pretty busy. Oh, for long, sure. And I, for I sure. wonder how how you felt the week after. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, honestly, it, like. It all. Beat, like literally beaten up and it, it's 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 one of those things like um you know having the opportunity to be able to do it number number mm-hmm. one was amazing but definitely beat up i mean i, I was younger then too gosh i think i was well, yeah. jace i was your age yeah i was a <laughs> kid you just a young just drunk, I know. <laughs> and it was easy because i don't think i was as beat up like physically as i am now where there's mm-hmm. no way there's no yeah. way that would be able to happen in this day and age. So, yeah, we but, rolled right from Masters. That used to be held like a well, and same with Madison, like a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday kind of, mm-hmm. or maybe even Tuesday, Wednesday, and yep. then right into right into teams, right into teams. Um, yeah. Now, fast forward a number of years here, uh, we've been fortunate to talk to Pat and to Kevin here, and so yep. by talking to you, we've we've completed the triumvirate of the uh, team <laughs> down at. <laughs> At Wadapalooza this year, I wondered if you could share any uh, any good stories uh, from oh my the, the the recent competition. Team was it one seventy eight or one eighty seven? Yeah. It was the it was a yeah. combination of ages. So one seventy eight. Yes. I don't so want to make you guys too old. The, what Wadapalooza did is they said, okay, your age has to add up to one hundred twenty five years between the three people. Mm-hmm. Which puts them at maybe Jason's age or a little bit younger. You could be one, you yeah, know, so forty very, four years old. Very tough teams. And yeah. A lot of them were. And there were some studs out there. I got out there, mm-hmm. I was like, Cool oh, man, are they checking out here? What's going on? Because there were some big <laughs> boys. Certificate. But ours was hundred and seventy eight years. So we were <laughs> okay. easily Fifty years between, we could take one of us out and still probably have beaten the years that we needed to to compete. <laughs> but um, it was it was very funny because the first event was a run, and oh boy. yeah, and I was you know I'd been running but I haven't run a lot, so I'm like I'm t- you know here I'm uh, and Kevin is just calm as a cucumber. He's like, nah, man, it's like we're good, no problem. Pat's like Ron. He goes. Just try and stay with me. I was like, perfect, Pat. I'll stay right with you, bro. So we took off on this run. And I don't think we got last in our group, but I don't think we got first either. <laughs> but I can tell you right now, Kevin took off like a rocket. Yes. He's like, hey, guys, yeah, just a little slow for me. I'm going to get going. Phew! And he like took off. We didn't see him, but maybe on one of the switchbacks at the very beginning yeah. and after that, he was gone. And, Kev- and uh, Pat and I just hung back. And it was like the perfect because I would lead a bit, a little yeah. bit. He would lead a little bit, a little bit. And we'd just go back and forth. And it was just a real comfortable pace. We nice. finished up. It was, I mean, <laughs> it was awesome. It, 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 honestly, I think Pat and I kept each other company the whole way. Um, but the one event that was like just comical was the, um, and, and Kevin said it perfectly. He goes, if I don't laugh at least twice this weekend, during the workout, he goes, it will be a, have been a disappointment. Dis- okay. And so he's coming in with this expectation. Oh, yeah. It was like, hey, listen, we're here to have a good time. Just enjoy each other, whatever it is. 
So we had to swim. It's called Worms Can't Swim, right? And you had okay. to do a swim. And Kevin, in his infinite wisdom, and I'm telling you that truthfully, he was like, Ron, why don't you go second? And I was like, no, bro. I think if I go first, I'm fresh on the swim, ba 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 ba. Kevin's looking at me. He goes, okay, bro. If you want to go first, you can go first. Well, <laughs> I'm not thinking about it. That's 50 straight burpee, bo- burpee worm overs right. twice in a row. So that's 100 burpee worm, burpee worm overs. jump overs because each one of them had a little bit of a break. And I was like cons- the only one consistent because I did Correct. two and three. Yep. Yep. And it was so. like miserable, <laughs> biggest mistake of my life. And at one point, I'm like sitting there and Kevin's like, come on, Ron. Come on. The time's almost up. And he kept me going. We were, I'm telling you right now, I, I'm pretty sure I left my body and I was like watching the whole thing as I was doing burpees. But he had me going at the end there as hard as I could. And it was, it was, it was all, it was comical because he is super fit. I don't oh, care yes. if he says he's yeah. not even close to where he should be. He's way fitter yeah. than anybody yeah. else in the whole age. His eighty percent uh, is better than most people's ridiculous. ninety ninety. Just ridiculous. The only place yeah. I could get him even unfit is weightlifting, mm-hmm. but that doesn't hold very well when you have to do a thousand of them. You know, and yeah. So um, yeah, but that yeah. was that was one of the stories that was like it was really, and he knew. He knew yeah, he right. just wasn't going to push it. He's like, okay, all right, bro. If you, you think you got it, I was like, yeah, yeah I got this. Kevin. <laughs> and I didn't think it through. Let, I, I didn't even let, come close to thinking it through. I didn't even think <laughs> through a half a second. I was only thinking being fresh on the swim. Let and, me guess um, that uh, Pat was very eager to discuss it post-workout, post-every oh, workout. Yeah. There was a debrief. Oh, it, yeah, he, he, he's the best, bro. Because yeah, I, I think, know. too – some of the times it was like we were having to like remind him as we walked out to the event. And that's when Kevin was just like laughing. At one point he's like, Pat, bro, they just told us. And he goes, yeah, yeah, but it, this, this, and this. Is it this and this? And, this. and he kept me on my toes. So I had to tell him because usually I'm the one. Literally, I've walked Getting out griefed. to the games. And yeah. like to the games on the floor standing there. And I look at the girl. I'm like, which workout is this? And she's like, you know, you're like, Really? You don't know which one this is? I was like, I have no idea. What am I doing? Just tell me when to stop and when tell me when to go. Tell, and, so, and how many reps I need to move on. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but that's that's Pat. And he's he's very much like that. But he is just uh, – I just – again, I, I can't talk highly enough about the guy. He's It was so much fun. Well, I told him, I go, hey, guys, if you want to do a team for, for the games, I'd do it in a second. But then they're uh-huh. like, okay, so who's put who's putting the bra on? Because it has to be two, two, two guys and two girls, That's right? Right. That's oh, right. It is a yeah. two yes. and two. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe you guys can have a little draft. Well, I guess you flip a coin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and the one who doesn't make it has to be the coach. Exactly. Obviously. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll do that. Listen, I've so, got a sauna. I got the ice barrel. Y'all come down. We'll just yeah. have a whole. We'll have a whole thing down here. Recovery night Bro. every night at the uh, I- grub household. I would love it, man. I'd love it. Yeah. It's, I, I'll tell you what. We have, um, we have been so blessed. And I, I'm saying this, I'm saying all three mm-hmm. of us, because, you know, we have been able to be in a, in a group of guys that um, it's, it's very unlike the young guys. I mean, I, I, I don't ever see that kind of camaraderie. I don't see any uh, that much of a connection unless they've known each other for a while. And during the competition thing, I understand, Hey, listen, we all have our game face, but when we come off the floor, it's like, you know, we're all brothers and stuff. Yep. And that's like the best part. That's what I think I've loved from day one, you know, is, uh, is to have people that you're standing shoulder to shoulder with that you would, you know, that you would stand shoulder to shoulder with gladly, no matter what. So. Absolutely. Because you you are you're respectful. You understand what it's taken has yeah. taken to get there. Yeah, and uh, yeah. the sacrifice is made. So oh, for sure, for sure, well, man. Ron, I love it. We we greatly appreciate you spending time with us tonight. <laughs> uh, have I hope we stories, hit some of the bullet points. The thoughts we sure. I hit. think we did. I think we hit some so, points. Thank you very much. Yeah, much man. appreciated. I, I, I love you guys. Like I said, I watch you guys and um, you're doing a great thing, man. And let me know if I can ever help with anything. If you need anything, whatever it is, just give me a shout out.
Thanks for tuning in to the Masters in Motion podcast. We'd be so grateful if you could take a moment to leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or your preferred podcast app. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Your support helps us reach more listeners and grow our Masters community. Until next time, get bolder, not older.